100 million dollars. Elon Musk has pledged the largest incentive prize in history to create technology that captures carbon dioxide. Let's take a quick look at the basics of the science behind this, see what futuristic tech is being built such as the hypergiant bioreactor, and learn how this tech could help Elon Musk build his colony on Mars, as carbon capture will also allow Martian settlers to produce their own oxygen, food, and fuel. Scalable tech is the goal. Elon Musk is looking for teams who will build real systems that can remove carbon carbon at the gigatons, the billions level, whatever it takes, saying that time is of the essence. Elon Musk wants to achieve not neutrality, but carbon negativity, which goes a step further and removes more carbon dioxide from the environment than we produce. The easiest way to understand carbon capture is to look at trees. Mark Rober explains it best, saying that the bulk of a tree is almost entirely carbon. A tree takes a carbon dioxide molecule from the air, then uses the sun's energy to split the carbon from the oxygen. The carbon makes makes the tree grow while the oxygen is released back into the air. As Mark Rober puts it, trees are massive vacuum bags completely stuffed full of carbon. The reason why carbon dioxide needs to be captured is because it is heating up the atmosphere, which is causing a number of climate disasters. All of the fossil fuels being burned, along with other human activities, adds to the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere. Another reason why Elon Musk is interested in carbon capture is because it will be needed for astronauts on Mars. The Martian atmosphere is made up of 90 95% carbon dioxide compared to Earth's 0.04%. The carbon dioxide on Mars will be used to make essential life support such as oxygen, fuel, and water, and could later be used to make clothing and mechanical parts. When it comes to capturing carbon on Earth, there is carbon capture and carbon removal. Capturing happens in the atmosphere or in the ocean. The carbon dioxide is locked away or it is converted into products such as building materials or drinking spirits. Carbon removal happens at the source, for example, at a fossil fuel power plant, the CO2 is removed before it is released into the atmosphere. It then gets stored underground or turned into something useful. There are four main ways of capturing carbon dioxide, and one of these ways could win Elon Musk's X-Prize competition. The first method is called direct air capture, and focuses on stripping out carbon dioxide from the air. This solution usually uses a giant fan to suck in air and grabs the carbon dioxide by using a chemical called a sorbent. The benefit of direct air capture is that it can be done nearly anywhere on Earth and can be powered by renewable energy. But the biggest issue is the cost, since it is expensive to set up. The second carbon capture method is to use the ocean. One way is to use kelps and seaweeds, which are efficient at capturing carbon dioxide. They also grow very fast and are better than land-based crops since they do not require any fresh water. They also do not take away land from important food crops. But farming kelp is very labor-intensive and has to be done in shallow coastal waters. Kelp is also very heavy and needs a lot of energy to bring it to shore, making it a challenge to do large-scale carbon capture. Some scientists have suggested sinking kelp deep into the ocean to permanently capture carbon dioxide. Another way of using the ocean to capture CO2 is to use tiny aquatic plants called plankton. These plants are responsible for most of the movement of carbon dioxide from the air to the ocean. This process is known as marine snowfall. When plankton are eaten or die, some of the carbon they have captured permanently sinks into the depths of the ocean. Some scientists have proposed bringing up the nutrient-rich waters found in the deep ocean to encourage the growth of plankton. This could then increase the amount of carbon dioxide being removed from the air. Rocks are another great place to store carbon for centuries or longer. This is the third carbon capture method. For the last 50 to 60 years, carbon dioxide has been pumped and injected into the ground to get more oil out of wells and reservoirs. One big upside to this process is that 95% of the CO2 stays permanently locked away underground, because the original oil oil that was trapped in these reservoirs has been stored there for millions of years. It is currently the only type of large-scale carbon dioxide storage that is profitable. But the problem with this CO2 injection method is that it is cost-effective because of its connection to the petroleum industry. There is also the enhanced weathering method, a natural process when rocks and minerals suck up carbon dioxide and change it into something else. The White Cliffs of Dover in England are made from chalk, also known as calcium carbonate. It forms over time from the CO2 in the air and other substances. The goal would be to speed up this process, which requires little energy, but does require a lot of labor-intensive rock handling. The fourth method involves
involves using land to lock away carbon dioxide from the air by burying it underground in the soil. Coastal lands such as salt marshes, mangroves, and wetlands could also be used. These areas are estimated to lock away double the amount of carbon as dry soils. So the futuristic tech that is being developed for the competition will need to pull carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and oceans, and then lock it away permanently in an environmentally friendly way. And it needs to do this on an Elon Musk level, which is hitting a starting target of removing a US ton or 2,000 pounds of carbon dioxide every day. The tech will have to be designed so that it can grow in the near future to remove billions of tons, gigatons. The judges will also look at the efficiency of the technology, the cost per ton, the environmental environmental impact and how long will the carbon dioxide be stored. The minimum goal is 100 years. Here are some potential contenders in the competition. There is Hypergiant, a company that is experimenting with algae to capture CO2. The Hypergiant bioreactor encourages the growth of these aquatic plants, creating the perfect environment for them to thrive in by monitoring and adjusting the light, temperature, and pH levels. They estimate that this system is 400 times more effective at capturing carbon dioxide than trees. Hypergiant plans to use fridge-sized bioreactors in big industrial buildings, office blocks, and apartment buildings. The carbon dioxide and algae byproducts can then be turned into products such as fuel, food, and even sneakers. Hypergiant has made their designs publicly available to encourage others to build the bioreactors and join them in the fight against climate change. Project Vesta has an ambitious goal of turning a trillion tons of CO2 into rock. This California-based nonprofit creates green sand beaches by using all olivine, which is a common volcanic mineral. When the olivine dissolves into the seawater, it causes a chain of chemical reactions which converts carbon dioxide in the ocean into calcium carbonate. This is then used by organisms such as corals to build their skeletons. In Project Vesta's model, waves pounding on the beach naturally speed up the carbon capture process and also helps to de-acidify the ocean. This could prove to be an affordable and scalable solution. Another promising idea is the use of artificial trees which can trap carbon dioxide in the air. Scientist Klaus Lochner was inspired by his daughter's science fair project, which aimed to remove carbon dioxide from the air using an aquarium pump and chemicals. Lochner has now created a working prototype which acts as a large artificial tree. His vision is that these trees will eventually be as common as wind turbines. Another company that is working on creating carbon negative solutions for Earth and Mars is Chemvita Factory. They are turning carbon dioxide into 30 different molecules and substances. They can even convert carbon dioxide into sugar, which could be eaten or turned into other nutrients. Elon Musk's carbon capture competition will last for four years, opened on Earth Day the 22nd of April 2021 and running through to Earth Day 2025. After the first 18 months, the top 15 teams will each receive $1 million to help them develop their ideas. At the end of the four years, the grand prize winner will be awarded $50 million, with $20 million for second second place and $10 million for third. The carbon removal competition is also a way for Musk to give back financially. Elon has asked his Twitter followers for advice on ways to donate money that really makes a difference. With this competition, Elon Musk is getting scientists and entrepreneurs to discover futuristic tech which can help humanity today. And he is getting them to think on his grand level. On the next episode of the Grand Venture Society, we take a look inside Elon Musk's library. Hit the subscribe and thumbs up buttons to not miss a video. Yeah.